Hello, this is the Gemsbach, and today's topic is Jackie Brown, a film directed by Quentin Tarantino and originally released in 1997. Aside from early films and oddities, Jackie Brown is certainly one of the two or three least viewed works in Tarantino's catalog, and it's not hard to see why. Tarantino followed up two extremely violent and unconventional dramas full of fast, aggressive dialogue, that is, Reservoir Dogs and Pulp Fiction, with a slow-paced, traditionally structured heist movie. Jackie Brown centers on a stalwart stewardess and a cautious clerk, it's very possible that Ordell's killed somebody. You realize that? While relegating Robert De Niro and Samuel L. Jackson to roles as sleazy, unlikable criminals. Grab that for me, would you, babe? You know it's for you. Girl, don't make me put my foot in your ass. In short, the movie was not at all what the audience was expecting from the director, and was soon overshadowed by the grandeur and gratuitousness of Kill Bill. Yeah! But Jackie Brown is a film every bit as entertaining as Tarantino's others, and the elements that make it a totally unique work in his filmography, which may have also contributed to its lack of fanfare and popularity, make it perhaps his most mature film of his entire career. This should seem kind of risky now, you know. To understand this claim, it will be necessary to get a feel for the ways in which Jackie Brown stands apart from all of Tarantino's other projects. So that's what this video will be about, starting now. There are plenty of ways that Jackie Brown could be said to stand out as noticeably unique, among crime dramas, among adaptations of novels, and even among movies generally. But among movies generally, Jackie Brown would stand out far less than any of Quentin Tarantino's other, more bombastic movies. And it is that particular uniqueness, as a borderline conventional film, made by someone who is otherwise one of the most stylistically distinct directors of the past 30 years, which I aim to cover in this section. What have you got to put up for collateral? I have distilled this somewhat nebulous topic down into four of the most telling aspects along these lines. First, pop culture quotes notwithstanding, Silly rabbit. Tricks are for kids. Jackie Brown is the only Tarantino-directed feature thus far with a script adapted from another work. The acclaimed writer-director adapted the script of Jackie Brown from the novel Rum Punch by Elmore Leonard. So if you have ever wondered how Tarantino would handle a story which he had not tailor-made from the ground up for his own style, then this is certainly already well worth seeing. In tackling the work of another writer, Tarantino proves himself as a filmmaker above and beyond what is possible in engineering every detail according to his narrative preferences. He changes the style, tone, and pace of his film to match the characters and the story. Yo, Louis. Lewis, she ain't there? Yo, no answer? Now you gotta listen to this, man, because this concerns you, all right? Second, Jackie Brown is the only film in his repertoire that can be said to have, and focus on, subdued, and maybe even subtle, characters. With the arguable exception of True Romance, which was written, though not directed, by Tarantino. Pam Greer and Robert Forster put in nuanced, elegant performances as Jackie Brown and Max Cherry strong yet vulnerable people connecting in a tough situation. And what about you, Max? What? If I was in Nicolette's place? No, I mean you right now. The entire film is highly character-driven, though, and the supporting performances by Michael Keaton, Robert De Niro, Bridget Fonda, and especially Samuel L. Jackson as the character Ordell Roby contrast perfectly with the primary pair, though, to be fair, much of this chemistry should likely be credited back to Elmore Leonard. Still, even characters who only appear briefly, such as that portrayed by Chris Tucker, are effective. Man, I want to help you, but I won't be locked in no goddamn trunk or no car. Third, the violence of Jackie Brown is backgrounded rather than foregrounded almost throughout. Come on, this gets silly, man. Most of the violent acts in the film take place out of the shot, and there are only a few of them punctuating the entire two and a half hours of the film. Now, to be sure, what this movie lacks in violence, it makes up for in drugs and sex, to some degree. What's this? But it remains notable that this is by far Tarantino's least bloody offering, even factoring in what passes for restrained cinematic violence among the director's other works, like, I suppose, uh, Reservoir Dogs and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. 
So if you have ever thought that Tarantino uses violence as a crutch, or heard him accused of being unable to set graphic violence aside when it might serve a script, or at least wondered how Tarantino might put a film together without his trademark shocking brutality, then this is a must watch. Fourth and finally, this is one of a very select few Tarantino movies without a performance from the man himself. Is that a tasty beverage or is that a tasty beverage? What? Disregarding a very, very minor vocal cameo. You have one message. While I know that his performances have occasionally meshed well into his movies, and that all of them possess a certain charm. What do they look like, Jimmy? Dorks. <laughs> they look like a couple of dorks. They can be distracting from the world of the film. You go something to something like you say. His decision to sit this one out leaves a movie whose 70s vibe is not impinged upon by Tarantino's 90s presence. You know, we might be right every once in a while, but we're very rarely fair. Setting aside its many unique aspects covered here, Jackie Brown still boasts many of Quentin Tarantino's greatest strengths. Great integration of music into scenes, compelling character interactions, stellar shot composition, and memorable tense moments. You see Max Cherry in the dress department where we- Man, look at me when I'm talking to you! So when you sum all of that together with its peculiarities compared to the rest of his directing career, you get something really special. Something that starts soon and looks good. A film that stands as a demonstration to all naysayers that Quentin Tarantino is not some kind of charlatan hiding behind glitz, glamour, and gore. He's a skilled, detail-oriented director whose narrative interests just happen to often swerve into gruesome territory. Rather than his usual mixture of homages to great samurai films and great westerns of the past, all they found was me. Jackie Brown is a sensitive rendering of other mid-20th century genres noir and semi-noir crime films, and exploitation films. Who the hell you think got your ass out of jail? The same guy that put my ass in jail. Thanks a lot. It is a slower burn than Tarantino's other, more frenetic outings, but it remains totally gripping and satisfying. I strongly urge fans of action and drama films who can stand a somewhat slower pace to check this film out. Use that little black thing there to turn off the alarm and unlock the door. What do I do? You ain't gotta do nothing, man. Just point it at the car, push the button, you hear a little ooh, ooh, ooh. 